Micrometers are probably the most critical precision measuring tool in manufacturing. And for all of us in metalworking and machining and engineering, they're a pretty exciting tool because they allow us to measure very precisely and consistently, which is probably the biggest key in all of the manufacturing done today. What I want to do is give you an overview of all of the different types that we have in the shop, the ones we use the most often, and a couple of tips on how to hold them, take care of them, and measure with them accurately. So how to read a mechanical micrometer. What you're doing is you are adding up the numbers. That's all you're doing. You are taking the numbers on the barrel and adding them to the numbers on the thimble. So right now we are at zero. We are at zero on the barrel and zero on the thimble. So there's no space between the anvils. So you're at a zero measurement right there. As we come out, each one of these graduations is numbered and they are in one thousandths of an inch. So this is five thousandths of an inch. We're on the five. This is ten thousandths of an inch. Fifteen. Twenty. And we're back at zero, which is twenty-five. Twenty-four plus one more is twenty-five. And over here, we're on the first graduation. So each graduation on the barrel is 25 thousandths, and each graduation on the thimble is one. So we're going past 25, we're floating around here, we've got 25 on the barrel and 20 on the thimble. So 25 plus 20, 45. And then we come back to zero at our second mark on the barrel is 50. So each mark, on the barrel is 25. So as we come out, there's a, there's a third one, that's 75. It's 25, 25, 25, so you're at 75. Plus 10, this is 85. As we come out to the fourth zero, now you have a full set of four marks and you're at 100 thousandths. 25, 25, 25, and 25, and you have a one here, that's marking the 100. So as we come out to a random measurement that you might come across when you're uh, measuring your part, here we are, we have 100 plus 25 is 125, plus 10, 135, plus 1, 136, or 100 plus 25 and 11, 36, 136. Most micrometers are calibrated and intended to be read in thousandths and ten thousandths. Uh, generally, for a lot of fine work, you're going to be working in the ten thousandths. The thimble is not marked here in between, but you're imagining that there are ten additional marks here that uh, are graduated in ten thousandths. This micrometer does have another scale on the back here. As we rotate it, you see another additional 10 numbers here. Let's go back down to our 100, and we'll get this as close as visually possible. And then I'm gonna lock it. That just keeps your thimble from moving as you move the tool around. So visually, we are at 100 thousandths even. And as we rotate over here, you're seeing a vernier scale on the barrel. It looks like we're not quite on zero. You can see it doesn't quite line up perfectly with the zero, but it does line up with the nine. And then as you go down, it's a little off on the eight, and it's farther and farther off. The marks don't line up as you go down. You're looking for the mark that lines up the closest on the thimble to these numbers on the barrel. We are looking at the nine here and that nine matches up pretty darn perfectly. So I'm gonna say it's 
uh, 99 thousandths and 9 tenths. So these numbers being the tenths, you have 9. And we have what we think is 100, but it's actually a little bit under. So you're reading, uh, if it's not 100 and it's less, then it's 99 thousandths and 9 tenths. One easy way to get from a small size to a large size very quickly is to roll it out on your hand or along your arm is the traditional way to do it. And then when you get closer to what you want to measure, you can switch back to your fingers. That way you can get to where you want to measure more quickly. These are precision instruments that you want to be careful never to drop these. If you do, it will need to be checked and probably recalibrated. Uh, as I mentioned, if you are doing very fine, precise work, you do want to wear gloves or use a micrometer that has an insulated frame on it to prevent the temperature of your hands changing the size. It's similar to calipers, um, but is more precise. Most calipers are rated to an accuracy of plus or minus one thou, uh, maybe two thou for the very large ones. What do we have on this one? This one's saying uh, 480, 481. Let's see what the micrometer says for the same thing, 482. It's important to learn how to read a me mechanical micrometer because these are standard classical tools that have proven over time to be very reliable and consistent. Also, it will gain you a decent amount of respect from other machinists and engineers if they see that you understand how this works and that you know how to read it correctly. This is an example of a digital micrometer. It has an LCD display and runs off of a battery. You do have to always have a battery with these in order to be able to use the tool. Um, some of them, like this one, do have a graduated thimble, so you could read it mechanically just like the other ones, um, but this one is really set up to be accurate on the uh, LCD display. So that's the difference is this one is purely mechanical, uh, traditional style, and this is the new uh, digital version. So this is 20 plus years of collecting and using and buying and selling and weeding through stuff that we use. Um, some of it is appealing for its antique characteristics and some of it we use in the shop every day. Here we have an old JT Slocum. This one is interesting because it's been relieved on the back side of the anvil for some job that was being done to gain access for measuring the part. This micrometer has measured and helped to make lots of aircraft and Homeland Defense uh, contract work. It's old and a little bit beat up, but still very accurate. Moving on here, we have a Shars digital micrometer. Um, it's a little faster to read the tenths on the digital than the manual micrometer. So if you're doing any kind of production, this is the way to go. This is an example of a depth micrometer. So instead of measuring a diameter of something, something round, this is set up with a flat anvil and a blade and you're reading the micrometer dial the same way you do on the others, but is for depth. And this one does come with different blades, so you can measure depths up to about six inches with this one. Uh, this is what's called limit micrometer. You have two micrometer heads on one anvil, and the idea would be that you would set your high and low tolerances on these, so usually the front one would be your high tolerance. So you would set it to, let's say a hundred thousandths would be your max size. And then your smaller one in the back would be 95 thousandths. You can lock them in place so they don't move. Essentially now that it's set, it turns it into a go, no-go gauge. And you would slide your part 
in between there. It should, your part is supposed to fit through the first one and not fit through the second one. And that tells you if your part is within tolerance. If it doesn't fit through the first one, it's still too big. If it fits through both of them, then it's too small and it's not gonna pass inspection. We have a large bore micrometer that has tips on each end that are actually contact points. So you're putting it into a round cylinder or a bore and spinning it to measure the size of that bore. And this one also comes apart and will accept different size extensions. So you can do a very large uh, bore with this. I believe this one is probably, I don't know, three or four inches up to 14 inches, something like that. This one underneath it is a good example of an old style uh, Sterrett government micrometer. It is a phenolic uh, coated frame, steel frame with phenolic on both sides. And this was an early way of insulating the frame against the temperature that your fingers have. So they remain accurate um, even with you handling them for an extended amount of time. My understanding is that these were generally made for measuring basically military equipment. We have a small pin micrometer. It's similar to the traditional style that we showed uh, earlier, but you can fit different pins in the end of the anvil here. Very handy for unusual parts and tubes and things like that. More accurate than a caliper because there's no flat spot on the inside. This one's an old Share 2 Miko thread micrometer. This is kind of cool because this is a lightweight hollow frame on this one. They liked to do the, to do the hollow frames. They even have some that were polished uh, aluminum like uh, looked like chrome, very nice. So this is for measuring threads. That's the uh, reason for the pointed tips on it. Old Reed Corporation micrometer. And this was my early micrometer I used uh, working as a machinist. Kind of old and worn, but like I said, it's still calibrated and was very accurate. Uh, micrometer heads are also available separately. So you can uh, buy just the head and mount it to a machine or another tool for precision precision setting or measurements. This guy is an old Sterrett. This is what they call a micrometer caliper. You get a one to six inch micrometer in one tool. So you slide it out to whatever size you want. One, two, three, four, five inches. So we're looking for number five here. So you slide the pin into the number five and that's a precision uh, located hole with a hardened sleeve around it. And the idea is you can just slide it out, put the pin in, put some tension on the stop, and now you have an accurate micrometer from five to six. Very cool old tool. They don't make these anymore, probably because uh, I suspect they were not super accurate. But at the time, it was probably a good um, compromise price-wise for people as far as being able to buy one tool instead of six uh, micrometers individually. Um, so very interesting, cool old tool, just a collector's item now. This is an old uh, calibration ring. It's a Sterrett tool. It's a one inch diameter and it's uh, used for a quick reference for your uh, one and two inch micrometers to check the calibration on it. So one inch. This is a small metric. So graduated in millimeters and goes up to, I think a centimeter, half an inch, something like that. This is an old Mitotoyo, what's called an indicating caliper. These are also very accurate. I would say as accurate or more accurate than the tenths reading digitals. You can adjust the thimble to the barrel like you normally would. And if you notice the dial up here moves when you actually start contacting the part. This is an interesting almond company from Ashburnham, Massachusetts. We have this just as a quick, easy three inch micrometer to grab in the shop. I thought it was interesting because I like the way that they did the frame on this one. It has the A for the almond company 
and it's uh, recessed with the paint and flush ground uh, to get the nice pattern in it. We have another set of the government micrometers. These are a little bit older and need to be polished, um, but it shows you, you know, example of uh, several different sizes with the interchangeable anvils. So these are designed to have a large measuring range and you can grab the anvil that you want. It slides into the top, you tighten it down, and then you have a large um, space to measure your part with and you change the length of the anvils to get your different range of measuring. The micrometer on the end is only able to measure a one inch range, zero to one inches. But by changing the anvil, now you're, let's say, uh, 10 or 12 inches here. If you go to a shorter anvil, you get 13, shorter again, 14, etc. So it's a way, it's an economy way of getting one micrometer that will measure a range of inches, three, four, five, six, seven inches, whatever, uh, with one tool. This is a Mitotoyo ball micrometer. The anvils are ground to a precision ball shape, which gives you the ability to measure one specific contact point on your part. And that's basically it. This is the whole collection. Um, a lot of it doesn't get used very often, but when you do need it and you can just walk over and grab it and get your job done, it's very handy. My question for you is, do you prefer the mechanical or the digital micrometers and why?